Hello YouTube and welcome to Gromforks. This is episode 65 of our interplanetary voyage of exploration. And in previous episode we have pretty much designed an automatic cargo SSTO to be shipping to um, to be sending supplies in terms of food, water and oxygen to the orbital science lab that we have. And as in the previous episode, we were when we were testing, we had some uh, problems, which basically in our tail section fell off. What, so we had to do an emergency landing. But uh, I have fixed that. I have added some struts, and this is the actual mission of our SSTO going for our orbital science lab one. So yes, taking off ever so slowly and I've decided that it since it's we have the low thrust weight oh dang it hi dang it so you have clogged one of our intakes beautiful well my immediate reaction is I have to disable the second intake which I immediately did just to make sure that our drag is introduced in the same way on both intakes so we're going up with four engines but only two intakes well, I think the flow is big, large enough, so we don't have to worry about it. By the way, this craft is a little bit on the lowish side, so I'm actually putting my nose a lot earlier down than I would normally would. So, just to make sure to pick up some speed. And, um, yeah, we're barely, as you can see, we're climbing, but we're barely going Mach 1. I think once we get into the higher parts of the atmosphere, it will be harder for the wings to maintain lift. So I'm now also at 11. I'm trying to accelerate as much as I can. But so far, overall, this small plane is performing pretty well, despite the fact that it's a little bit... Well, it's not the most stable plane, I can tell you that much. Okay, and we are accelerating. We are around Mach 1.5 passing. So, picking up some speed at around 15. At around 15,000 uh, meters. And um, I'm showing this slightly accelerated because, I mean... Yeah, it is. It takes time until we get to the atmosphere. So uh, while we're getting there, I'm going to talk a little bit what were my intentions in terms of the future missions. As you know, we are we do have some ships still going to Jewel. Hopefully those will be able to basically deploy in the same fashion as we did around Eve and Duna. For the Duna mission, I'm planning a few more missions in terms of sending Kerbals and also in terms of colonization. I'm planning to build first, expand our orbital station around Duna and then hopefully start creating a big ship that would be basically maybe taking a base down to the surface of Duna some at some point in the will be not some near future but a little bit further out future uh, also I want to deploy the rover especially on Duna and I think that will be the focus for some of my future near future episodes yeah and uh, hopefully I'm kind of hoping that we, we do have some more window launches to Joule coming soon and we have now switched to our sabers to the rocket fuel mode which were was cool because we were already going pretty fast in terms of 1.5 so as you can see guys this SSTO has pretty decent capabilities despite the fact that it is a little bit low oh well let's say thrust to weight initially challenged so um, 374 meters per second to burn with 1000 in the tank which is pretty good so anyway I was talking about um, yeah future episodes the main I think one that I should be doing is the rover on Duna to be able to like see how are we gonna prepare the colonization and also picking aside there are a few biomes on Duna we only visited like two of them but I already have a potential preference in terms of 
our future landing spot. So we, yes, we will see how that one will fare. And we also have to get Jeb back. And we have also some more transfers that will be coming. It's Sarnus, Eve. And after that, our probes should be getting the dual sphere of influence. And we would be launching Jeb back home. So lots of stuff happening. And I'm actually hoping that all will go well. But we'll, we'll see. I'm a little bit um, waiting to get some more science unlocked for the bigger launches, especially in terms of Duna, because rather than sending now a flotilla, which I did last time, for the colony ship and some more things, I would like to actually have one big massive ship that I will be assembling in orbit to actually go there. We'll see how many of these will actually happen. These are some, just some of my ideas. Uh, at the moment, but uh, yes. And the whole purpose of also Minmus was to actually also use it as a proving grounds for either bases or maybe in the future, maybe not colonization, but maybe like just mining or carbonite operations in terms of refueling, etc., etc. Okay, back to, well back to the task at hand, which is approach to our space station. As you can see, I have opened up um, our cargo bay because I wanted to extend the communication dish to be able to maintain connection. Despite the fact that this is playing as local control, I'm trying to play as if remote tech work for this probe. And I know I, you can, I can fiddle with the file to actually get it to work, but I don't know if I'll be bothered with it. We'll see. We are in orbit around Kerbin, so I guess the responsiveness would be roughly equal. Okay, 1.2 kilometers in, from orbital lab. And I'm thinking because when we're passing the time on this interplanetary missions, I guess resources get depleted quite quickly. And uh, this is the only reason why I'm actually still not having Kerbals in the orbit around Minmus, because I don't want to be resupplying two stations with uh, this until the point when we get a chance to have self-sustaining stations, courtesy of rover dudes... Um, USI colonization, so yeah. OKS, I think MKS is still being called here at for the 0 0.90. Okay, closing up, time to select a docking port where we will be docking 200 meters. Let us open our nose docking cone and Let's see, I'm thinking maybe of taking the top one rather, or let's take the side one. Yeah, I think the side one will be fun. It is a little bit crowded, starting to getting crowded there, so I'll probably at some point undock my tugs, especially the tug with the supplies that I sent last time. Assuming that this SSTO concept seems to be seem to be working correctly, if that mission proves to be a success, I will definitely uh, be using that one for resupply runs. I guess. Cool. One hundred meters out. Okay. And as you can see, we have 544 meters per second still in the tank, which will be more than, uh, than enough for us to deorbit as well. So I don't think we really need to care about refueling. So yeah, coming up ever so closer. By the way, you're seeing this, uh, I think, in three times times acceleration for frame rate issues, so you can have a smooth docking. 
and three meters, two meters, and dock. I was a little bit initially concerned if I would be hitting with my front winglets the zoology bay. I was worried if the cows might get ripped out into space, but apparently this was not the case. So, I'm now trying to see where do I have spare parts. And I'm taking one of my guys out just to make sure that I fix the intake on our SSTO. Cool. I think this is Mike actually, I'm not sure. Going to the clog intake and let's unclog it, shall we? Repair the intake and repair the insulation. Why not? Okay, mm, and also we have here one faulty part that we need to fix as well. Cool. Applied some duct tape. And let us board. Perfect. This is just great. So, and despite the fact that, um, yeah, so now I'm just transferring life support supplies from our SSTO, just unloading them. And I decided to cut it here and just do some research. So, rather than that, let us just quickly review what we have. Uh, let's see, these two nodes here and I'm just trying to find which one science node I want to unlock. Mm, and let's see, uh, wings. I think I should go with those probably, yes. Okay, perfect. Or stabilizers, yeah. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. This is Grumfork signing off.